for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip out the Mad Cheese as always. Got another full offensive breakdown for you guys today. And if you guys don't know, every month I try to put out a new full breakdown of an offense. This month I'm going to be doing the uh, the Cowboys, uh, which I just went through all the books I put out. Just about every single ebook that I'm going to do this year is up on my website now. Also, links in the description, which is the reason I'm putting this video out. Uh, and I was really surprised with the Cowboys. The Cowboys. Uh, has a lot of offensive concepts I was already using typically from the Saints playbook was in the Cowboys uh, So I decided to do the Cowboys playbook because I think that this is probably one of the better ones out there So if you guys want to check out any team playbook links in the description if you guys aren't a fan of the Cowboys playbook I highly recommend it though. It's a very good book But if you want to pick up your own book links in the description below They're also on my patreon on my join out community tab all that stuff Also, if you guys want me to continue to do this series every month to try to put out a full breakdown uh, Number one, let me know in the comment section what you what team playbook you would like to see me do next and number two Woo! hit the like button let me know in the comment section if you guys want me to continue this series of videos other than that let's go let's get right into the video next up we got the bench pivot against cover three just put the rb route on a streak and he's gonna have a very big play against cover three now this is a tight end right now but typically you can put your fastest receiver there i just have my third receiver as my tight end uh, this could be an easy one play touchdown if you really want to spread the defense you can put the running back out and put him on a streak of some kind just to keep that safety over as much as possible and then you can see you can have a very big play up the seam because he does get past the cornerback so a very easy one play touchdown against cover three and you're really gonna have success against any man or zone with the a route as well as you can see he's not really covered either so cover two cover three he'll get outside cover four also and the B route is a really good man beating route. Although you can see here, he's also going to have success getting outside of the cover three. So it's a very hard to play to stop. Going to run this against a man coverage a couple times. Like I said, very easy to play. Just bullet pass lead outside. You can steal that all game. Next up, we got the bunch trail. Streak the B route. And against cover two zone, uh, Waller will find space in that gap once again. Pretty much every route here beats man. Uh, I would say the RB route is probably the best, but you can see the drag will beat it. The comeback route will beat it. The R the uh, the R one route will beat it. Let's go. Let's do the A route real quick. Like I said, that's something that uh, typically man coverage has a hard time covering. If you want to get the RB route though, you typically against man cover two like a man, you have to streak. And then you can see how this guy will get open even against a cornerback like he's facing. Against cover four, just block everyone. Um, you, can, you can't block um, the B route or the RB route, but you basically block everybody you can block, I should say. And then the X route here is going to get past uh, the safety over the top for another easy one-play touchdown. Is that the way for him to get inside the free safety? Go to the replay real quick. You have to wait for this receiver to get inside the free safety here and then bullet and pass lead away because he's well beyond what this strong safety can do to come back and get into the play. Next about the gun bunch, we got the speed dig. Another cover three one play touchdown against current gen consoles. You have to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field, motion this receiver in and put him on a streak. I'm going to also block my running back slide my protection to the left. You have to wait for this uh, receiver here to uh, cross a certain point before it allows you to pass lead again. But you can see it's a really easy one play touchdown just as long as you wait for the cornerback to stop. Uh, I'll go to the replay to, uh, to show what happened there. You basically wait for this receiver. Number one, this cornerback next to him will stop covering to take on the crosser. At that point, you basically have to wait for this receiver to cross 31 yards, which he does already. And then you can bullet and pass lead away from the safety. If the ball leaves my hand before that point, it won't allow me to pass lead. So you can see it's actually pretty close as he's right at that 30 yard marker. So like I said, maybe the cutoff's 30, but ultimately you have to wait for, I say 31 yards before you can pass lead again. Next up, we have the gun bunch verticals. So I'm gonna do it again from the other hash mark, delay fade, slide protection. So I'm gonna roll in that direction anyway. And here you can see the cornerback glitches out a little bit more from the other hash mark. So maybe it's not specific to a hash mark, 
but you can see how either way it has success. So this is what you're watching for with this cornerback. Basically, he's just going to uh, dumb out a little bit and go towards the delay fade, leaving this cornerback for an easy, you know, bullet pass it away from the corner for an easy one-play touchdown against cover three post patch. Next up, we have the Y curl. It's gonna be a very big play against cover three. I like the motion out the running back streak, the A route. That's pretty much all you have to do. The A route's gonna be the biggest play. Um, especially if you run to the sideline again, it's just a good play up the seam. Next up, we have the Z spot. All you really have to do is streak the B route. That's pretty much it. The RB route here is going to be the play against just about any zone coverage. As you can see, he just gets wide open as those uh, safety as the safety gets spread too far apart from the uh, the cornerback. That's really all you have to do. Against cover three, it'll have similar success, but you could also bomb it up for a one-play touchdown. I'm just going to motion over the running back here, put him into a streak. Uh, you won't have a ton of coverage, but that'll keep the safety away. And then the B route here can have a lot of success right over the top. As you can see, we almost have a one-play touchdown. I'll say it's a one-play touchdown. If I had a little bit more speed, he probably would have been gone. But that's a really easy read. You just have to run it from the hash mark. Next up, we have the jailbreak screen. This play's going to be best against cover three and cover four. It's kind of have to wait until your blocker gets out and gets on the uh, the corner. Although there, the other blocker didn't get there, but it's still going to be a best, you know, a good play against cover three, cover four. Like I said, well, if we wait till that that's till 74 gets out in space, and also when I have my fastest guy out here, we have our best opportunity for a big play. Except we have the quarterback draw. If you get spread looks, which you typically will because of all the um, additional receivers in the empty backfield, you can always have a run threat, which is a quarterback draw. Now you gotta be careful because quarterbacks do fumble. That was the first time I did that, and he fumbled right away. But if you see the defense is too spread, if they're not respecting the fact that the quarterback can run, or if you have a mobile quarterback, this is something they can do quite often and have success. Next up we have the Z under. Against man or zone, doesn't really matter. I'm just going to motion this guy in, put the A route on a drag. The Y route will get open against a lot of different coverages. Typically going to get open mostly against um, zone coverages, cover two and cover three. Uh, the drag is really just your check down and your man beater. So let's go and do that again. So the any zone coverage, the Y route is going to pretty much be there. If not, like I said, the drag route is your check down. The streak is really there just to pull back coverage. Let's do that one more time. Looks like we're going to have that corner route that time. I don't know if that was a cover three or cover four, but it's going to work against any zone. You don't even have to make that motion, to be honest with you. Here it looks like we have that cover two. Like I said, the motion is not 100% necessary. I just find it helps them get off the line. I get them a better release. Next up, we have the Y sail. The, uh, the Y route and the A route are good. Well, actually, every route except for the B route. It's a good man beater. The RB route is a really good uh, cover three or cover four play. As you can see, he's open underneath for an easy catch and run. Other than that, you mostly have man coverage uh, routes. Unless it's a cover two, then the B route can have a lot of success, although that um, was a cover two, and I recognize it late, but ultimately, you still had a big play to the running back, so it doesn't really matter what coverage it is. The running back's good against any zone. Next up, we have the levels Y sail. It's not a play, I'll go random. The RB route's really going to be best against uh, cover three and cover four, but if you have a speed advantage, I mean, you can even beat man coverage, as you can see right there. It still got out enough into the flat. That wasn't man, though. Uh, but ultimately, the RB route's really best against zone coverage. As you can see, that zone chuck is really just gets that guy off of his spot to the point where the running back just gets open instantly. Now, the, the check downs, like the B route and the, and the Y route and all that stuff, I mean, the, 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 po the corner route does a really good job of getting open against most zones, especially if you have a good tight end like I have here. But ultimately, I mean, these are, you know, this is all about the flat and all about the corner route. The, the, the crossers will make good check downs, but it's really more about these two routes on the right. Next up, we have the RPO alert screen. So, this play here, I mean, if we have a, a, a gap, we can treat this like an inside zone, it's going to be very successful. But the uh, the screen itself is going to be best against things like cover three and cover four. I got to, you got to hit the X button pretty quick because I, I hit it and it didn't let me. <laughs> so let's go, let's do that again. Like I said, just pull that out. We got good blocking out here. There's there's man on man. We don't have an, an open defender. We don't have a, an extra defender at all. And we have a very big play. So cover three, cover four. Man coverage, not so much because typically the man coverage, um, they'll drop down right away. Uh, but you can see right here, I mean, this is, you know, if you do that, you can still have some success, but it's just not going to be as good as the off coverage is like cover three and cover four. Next up, we have the stick. 
I'm just going to streak the B route. That's all I really have to do. I'll, I'll streak the A route too, but ultimately um, this is just another cover two play where I'm just going to throw it to the, the X route once he gets past the cornerback. And then you can see we can have a really big play, um, you know, outside the safety. The, the most important part, run it from the sideline just to get the most catch and run space possible. But the most important part is the bullet and the pass lead away. If you throw it too early, you can see right there you can give the guy a play because I, I just didn't time it. You really have to watch when he passes this cornerback. Um, if I go to the replay, which it's not going to let me do, but you really have to watch. Let's do it again live. Just watch the quarterback. You're, that's really all there is to it. Once he gets past him enough, like I said right here, he slows down, gets into his back pedal. Like I said, that throw to the sideline too much is what's causing it to be a short throw. But um, let's go and do this one more time. Like I said, you can also flat the wire out just for a quicker reaction time to the flats. Uh, you can see like the cornerback there will react, and you can see this is just you know this is like pitch and catch. Like I said, it's all timing. It's all based off of when you throw the ball, but it's a really big play. Except we have the fake screen wheel. It's another good cover to play. No adjustments needed. The wire out here is just going to be a very big play outside. Um, this is really meant to be a cover to play for the most part. As you can see we get a very easy one play touchdown there. Against man coverage, you can see it just goes completely around the uh, the press, uh, which is something that uh, you're not going to see a lot at a lot of, out of a lot of different routes. This is man cover two. He just basically gets gets right around that, and then you can see we have another big play uh, where there's typically not a ton of big plays against cover two man. Against cover three, I'm just going to motion this guy over and put everybody on streaks except for the B route and put him on a fade because this linebacker wants to come over and uh, basically try to jam him off that route. So you can see if I put him on a fade, he won't get jammed. If I leave him on a streak, he will though. So let's go and do that again. Watch the, uh, the B route. As you see, he's on a streak now. So he will get uh, check, you know, and it'll basically slow everything down to the point where he's now getting covered. So a fade is a key to that play and being successful. Let's do that again. Like I said, just put him on a fade just so he gets that outside release. He'll actually run right past that linebacker who was attempting to catch him off guard. And we get a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we have the inside zone. This is the best run play in this formation. You can see a lot of times that receiver will come over and seal that linebacker. So if he does that properly, it's definitely a big help. Sometimes the, uh, the, the the guard will get off to that level too, but you can see it's a very successful inside run, just as long as you're looking at a favorable defense, which is either matching or less. Next up out of the trailway flex with the PA crossers. The tight end's a good man coverage beater. That's really the only um, thing that makes this play different than a lot of other plays that I put out, where basically, you know, this is a good man being rack, especially if you have a good tight end. But ultimately, I want to run this against random plays and just put the tight end on the streak, put the wire around the drag, and these uh, crossers will get open against just about any defense. Uh, you just basically watch, I mean, the drag and the, and the deep crosser will both pretty much get open. So you're just basically watching the high-low routes. Man or zone, doesn't really matter. You're just watching the, the deep crosser and the drag. Uh, as you can see here, I mean, I accidentally hit the wrong button, but they were both open. If I go to the replay, you can see that both of the receivers were open. It doesn't really matter the defense. So let's do that again. I like to block the running back too because I don't want the, I don't want that play action to get in the way. Here we go once again. It looks like a couple quarters uh, matching principles. It still gets open. It doesn't really matter. These crossers kill all that. Except we got the inside zone. This is one of the better run plays. I find it's probably best to even out the formation and shift one of these tight ends over um, so that you can get a little bit better blocking. But at the end of the day, it's a, it's just a good run play to mix in. Uh, nothing too crazy. It's just an inside zone. I find that if you don't have that extra blocker though, a lot of times you won't get the advantage that you need to, to get a consistent run. Next up we have the mesh sit. Against cover three, you just want to put the B route on a streak. And uh, I say streak the Y route too, just to keep that uh, that safety over there. Because if you have a fast enough tight end, you can get a very explosive player. Even a one play touchdown against cover three, as you can see the cornerback slows down to let the tight end get passed. Uh, because he really has to react to the running back route. So watching this, like I said, the second he gets right about here and he flips his hips, I could throw that ball right now because that cornerback can't flip his hips and get back. I probably threw it a little bit late to be a one play touchdown. As you can see, I'm just, the timing, you know, that's the most important thing because now the safety's reacting. So I really watch for that cornerback to flip his hips and turn around. So let's do that again. So once that cornerback plants his feet, bomb it up because the safety hasn't reacted yet and you have an easy one play touchdown against cover three as long as you have a fast enough tight end. Except we got the power up. It's a good inside run. It's kind of like a trap. 
um, a trap run, uh, the way the blocking sets up. Uh, I think the inside zone is probably the better run of the two, but ultimately this is a good play to mix in. You can kind of go in the opposite direction. Like right here, it looks like we have a lot of you know, blitzing safeties coming in. I, I'm not sure, you know, you basically just have a counter. You don't always have to go in one direction. Like on the inside zone, you pretty much go in one way. This way here, at least you have the option to go in multiple directions. Except we have the bunch dig. Against cover three, I'm gonna motion across one of these receivers, doesn't really matter, put them on a streak. Then I'm gonna put the X route on an out route of five yards and the RB route on the delay fade. Block my running back, that's all I really have to do. Uh, this is gonna be a one play touchdown against cover three to the B route as the uh, all the streaks in the delay fade just basically play with the, um, the safety in the middle. Has that same success against cover two. I'm going to do that again. Let's see, cover two, cover two zone, cover two man. It's going to be the same as all these delay fades and everything just basically mess with the safeties. Here we got a, a man coverage. So it's going to be the same way. Just as long as that, uh, that, that RB route doesn't get out too early, it's going to have the same success against just about any single defense. You really want your your slowest player at the RB route because you don't want him to get out too early. If he gets out too early, that could be a problem. Because I messed that up by audibling the wrong guy. So let's go ahead and let's do that one more time. Like I said, I get all my adjustments in before I motion this guy across. Block my running back, slide my protection. And the B route here will get open against cover two men the same way. As you can see, it gets right over the top of the safety, and he's too fast for the man coverage. So, a very easy play. One play touchdown against just about anything. Pretty much the exact same setup here. I don't need any adjustments, though, when it comes to cover for quarters. I just need a speed advantage. Except we get the halfback counter weak. It's just a good run play. I mean, you have a fullback in the formation. Um, you know, a lot of times you pretty much just left with a straight ahead run at least here you have an option to go the opposite way if your opponent uh, is, is spending too much time paying attention to the bunch this is probably one of the better counter run plays to run um, in the formation so the, sh the shift gives them a little bit of time to uh, to change their defense but ultimately it's a very successful run play next up we get the halfback zone week It's a good run play. It's a it's a kind of a counter run away from the bunch. It works well with the quick pitch, uh, but ultimately it's just a consistent run. I find it's a better run. You can flip it and run towards the receiver side, but I don't find it's the better way to go. I find it's best to run it the opposite way. You'll typically have less opposition. You'll typically have uh, the user following the bunch, so you won't have to worry about him as much. And it's a very good consistent run play from this formation. Next up out of the single back bunch, we got the quick pitch. This play here, I mean, it's there's no real adjustments. Against cover three or cover four, you're going to have the most success. Next up, we got the verticals. It's a really good cover three play, but you could also run this against just about any play. Uh, all you have to do is put the A route streak and the B route on a drag, uh, which I didn't really do. Let's do that again. It's the RB route on a streak, my bad, and the B route on a drag. Uh, you really have the same type of crossing route. Uh, setup that I've been uh, going over in a lot of my different uh, plays, but you know that's pretty much something you could run against just about any defense. That was a cover four quarters. Um, we could go ahead and do that against man, man cover two. Let's go let's do it again. If I didn't do that right, there we go. So like I said, I mean the B route's already open, the A route crosses, but that's something I'm not suggesting that route will always be there. But either that or the drag will be there. Um, we'll go and we'll do that against something like a cover three. Let's do that one more time. Like I said, this is something where everything should clear. The B route's already open. The A route's coming open, although realistically there, that was something I probably should have threw a little bit quicker. But um, you can see it doesn't really matter. That's something that you can do. It's a pretty easy setup um, against just about any defense. But if you have a cover three, this is probably best against cover three because the RB route really just gets open right at the cover three seam. It's just the way it discovers. So you can motion out the uh, the outside receiver to try to create more separation, but it's not something you really have to do. It's something that I just do through habit, and it kind of gives away where you're going. But against cover three, especially, this RB route is typically going to get open right at the seam. 
Now against cover two, you just have to streak the RB route and the B route will get open above the cornerback here. Um, you definitely want to run that from the open side of the field. As you can see, I run out of space pretty quick. You can get some explosive catch and run type of plays as long as you run it from the open side of the field. So we'll go and we'll do that again. Cover two, Tampa two, put this RB route on a streak. Get this B route here over the top and like I said you get some really big catch and runs safety catches up we got a superstar out there but you can definitely get some big plays doing that trick next up we got the Z spot it's another play that's good against random you just want to put uh, the B route here on a streak it's not really a man beating play but you'll have a lot of success against zone with this flat and then and the route above it that looked like a man cover though so we're gonna go we're just gonna, we're gonna switch over to some of our man our zone cover concept so Got the B route here, like I said, the RB route will be open right away, the A route will be open over the top. Really easy series of plays. We'll have the same effect against cover three. You look at the same two routes. So this is something that you could run uh, with success um, over and over against pretty much any zone coverage. Now, as far as your man coverage goes, you're probably gonna wanna put the X route on either a comeback or a slant or a curl or a, you know a drag, an in route, something like that. Any concept that beats man. We'll go ahead and we'll beat, uh, we'll put the cover three up again. We're going to motion this guy across. This here has success against cover three in a one play touchdown capacity with a setup like this. As you can see right here, we just basically split the uh, the safety in the cornerback. We're going to have an easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we got the bench. Against cover three, cover four, the tight ends will get open. Against man coverage and cover two, the uh, the X route will get open. That looked like a cover two though. You can try to run this where you basically put the um, one side into a cover two side, and then the other side into the to, to the normal side. So here, like I said, it looks like we have that cover two, cover two zone gets open right outside of it. I'm sure if I go to the replay, the other side wasn't as successful as the streaking side. So if we go to the other side here. You see, sometimes the cornerback, it was definitely, he's definitely in better position, the safety and the cornerback. We're here, you have much more separation because the safety is pulling back the tight end, or the tight end is pulling back the safety. Pretty much every route here should have success against man as well. So you can see here, that's a cover three, and it was still working to the outside. So you really have a lot of opportunity all over the field. This is a play that really works well against random. Pretty much everything beats man and zone with proper timing and with these streaking um, you know, streaking tight ends here. So that that probably is an easy touchdown if I would have caught and ran that. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. I'll go random on defense. This play you can really run to either side. I would just say typically you want to take it to whatever side has a little bit of a blocking advantage. But it's going to have success both ways because it's an evenly stacked formation and it's definitely a bread and butter offensive run. So if you have anything, you know, if I, if you see something like a cover three, you just probably just want to run away from the cover three safety. But that's about it. Next up, we have the halfback wham. The halfback wham is a really good inside run um, where essentially it's almost like a trap block with the tight end. Uh, it's something I've never really been a big fan of it, but it's something that I want to put in my ebooks because I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, have been running this for a very long time with success. So I at least wanted to uh, bring it up. But this play is probably going to work best against. Um, you know formations maybe kind of like this where you have the uh, the DT so far spread apart uh, And then you can see you can have a lot of success right up the middle because this is like I said It's a good run. It's been a good run for a very long time next up. We have the halfback zone weak keep going random on defense It's another good run play you can take it either way just by flipping it with the right stick But you're just going to look for opportunity right here I don't know if I necessarily have the most opportunity you want more spacing typically when you run the stretch from this formation You want a tighter look when you run a uh, inside run, you want a, a more space look. Now here we have that cover through safety, so I definitely want to run it to the side as is. But you can see, as long as you have spacing inside, you will get a good, you know, it will create good separation for a run lane. Next up, out of the single back two's close, we have the PA boot slide. We're going with the Tampa two to start. All I'm going to do is put the A route on a streak. And that's pretty much all I have to do. The B route here uh, should beat most cover twos because it's just a cover two concept. Although I probably should have threw that a little bit sooner. But ultimately you have a good series of check downs along the way as well with the Y route and the X route. But you're going to, you know, the B route's going to get open pretty much every single time. As you can see right here, I mean, we can basically take these shorter routes if we guess wrong about the defense. It's also going to have success against things like cover three because it's pretty much the same concept 
Uh, and the B route here a lot of times will have success underneath. It's also going to have success against things like cover three. Uh, because it's pretty much the same concept. You'll just have a little bit of a, a smaller window. You're probably going to want to throw it behind the receiver two by holding the left trigger or the L2 button just to have a low throw. Um, but you can see how it's going to have plenty of separation, plenty of space. Next up, we got the PA deep cross. I'm pretty much just going to put the X route on a streak and then either the A on a drag, or you don't have to put them on a drag at all, but the A route could be a good drag check down. And this is basically just going to do, uh, you know, work off the play action. So this is a run heavy formation, so I really didn't get a lot of separation there. But uh, this is a run heavy formation where essentially um, you just have a lot of really good deep crossers. If it's a zone coverage, the running back's a good read. Uh, but the B route here is definitely going to be the, uh, the best as far as how much it could pick up on a play. But if it's a zone coverage, let's say it's like a zone cover three, um, you just basically go from front to back. If the running back's there, which he'll typically be, you just take him. If he's not there, if the user's on or something like that, then you just work your way back to the drag and then you're way back to the crosser. And essentially one play will be open no matter what the zone coverage is pretty much every time. Now we'll go Tampa 2, pretty much the same setup. Uh, I probably expect the exact same routes to be open, but here I can go with something a little bit deeper. You can see we have the same type of, I don't know why I didn't catch it, it was an accurate pass, but you can see he was wide open in the zone. So you're basically just going from front to back. You're just going from RB route to A route to B route. Next up we have the bench switch. Against cover two or really any coverage, you can run this a couple different ways. You could put the uh, Y route on a streak, put the A route on a drag. You'll have a lot of success that way. Um, against cover two zones, you can see it really does a good job of pulling the, uh, the safety and the cornerback apart. You could also motion one of these guys across and do a similar setup where you're streaking. I um, mean, you know, can create a bunch concept, put the, the, the Y route on the flat. It has the exact same effect. As you can see, we're just pulling apart the cornerback and the safety. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And you can do that exact same setup against pretty much any zone and the uh it'll have success the, especially the x route will have success this play works pretty good as is though you don't really need to do a lot although the x route here um, you'll have you know much more opportunity for the receiver to get caught by the safety if you don't put something to pull them back against cover three like i say you do the exact same setup against any zone it'll pretty much have the same success as you can see right here the x route gets open outside of it doesn't really matter cover two cover three cover four but if i move the ball over Go ahead and I'll motion this guy over, streak everybody inside. And we're going to have a very easy play up the seam to the uh, the receiver there. You can see the safeties can't react in time. Next up, we got the drive flood. It's a man beating play for the most part, so we'll just pick cover one man. Pretty much all these routes are man beating routes. Um, you can see the tight end is probably the star of the play, but everything here beats man. Except for the B route. The B route's the only one that doesn't. The Y route gets across the formation pretty quick. It's a really good check down. Uh, and this is just, it's just a bunch of man beating concepts, although they're, oh, they're, on, they're only over the middle. Except we get the halfback zone weak. Again, zone, you can motion over one of these, uh, either the tight end or the receiver. I've made a lot of motions in this formation, so it shouldn't give it, you shouldn't tip your hand by any means. Uh, and then you can see you can have a really successful run play uh, behind that, uh, that diamond uh, cluster of receivers. You can flip it if you want to, you can run it as is. Like right here, we have a lot of spacing going to the strong side and tight end side, but typically you want to go the opposite way of the cover three safety. And that's pretty much the play. Like I said, you can make any number of motions here. You can motion the tight end if you want. You can motion the receiver, it doesn't really matter. The tight end, obviously, a lot of times is a better blocker. So in a lot of scenarios, that would make the most sense, but it's a very consistent run play in this formation. Next up, we got the jet sweep. Another play that's going to work best against cover three, cover four zone, man coverage and stuff like that. But you can see it's just a very, you know, it's a quick inside handoff, which a lot of formations you have a lot more time where these receivers are motioning across. So the fact that this is so quick should give your opponent uh, a little bit of a harder time stopping it. So it's going to be best. Like, right, we have the cover three safety in the box on that side anyway. Run to this side. Next up, we have the PA boot slide. All you have to do is put the A route here on a streak, and the B route should beat just about any zone coverage outside. If it's a man coverage, the X route coming across uh, the center is going to be your best bet. The zig without, if it's a man coverage, you can leave the zig. The zig itself, the A route's a pretty decent uh, man check down, but I like to go uh, zone heavy. Um, and then, you know, the Y route also is a good route underneath zone. So really, the streak is just a pullback coverage, and then you're pretty much just reading front to back. 
The short route underneath will be cover three and cover four zone. The X route will be man, and the B route should just be just about any zone coverage outside. This looks like a cover two. We're gonna beat that outside very easily. Um, you'll have explosive play. I mean, against cover two, you can help. probably won't play touchdown, but I threw that a little bit earlier. But it'll pretty much beat any zone coverage outside. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. If there's no cornerback out here, like this looks like we got a blitzing safety. It's typically best to take it to the to the side of the, that it's you know the the, the default side. But if it's a zone coverage, typically you want to flip it and run it back towards the receivers because you'll have a blocking advantage behind the receivers. So ultimately, against zone coverage, flip it. Next up, we get the halfback zone weak. It's one of the better inside run plays, although here you can see that safety coming down the box. We're going to flip it against a look like this. Um, as you can see, it's a good, you know, just as long as the guard gets off the double team, typically you'll have a successful run play inside. Because the guard is going to be your lead blocker. Here's another look. I don't know if this is really something that I want to go. But you see, starts on a double team, typically gets off. It's just a good inside run. One of the better inside runs in the formation. Next up, we got the PA boot. You can run this against just about anything. Put the Y route on the drag. Put the A route on the streak. I'm blocking my running back. Uh, and this is pretty much it. You're going to have, um, you know, one of these crossers should get open just about every single time, man or zone. Um, you know, they, they pretty much both get open, to be honest with you. The only thing you really have to worry about is the... Um, is the actual one well, other than the blitz as you can see we have a, a lot of pressure coming here but the only thing you have to worry about is the user covering the crosser if that happens just take the dragging check down next up we got the hatback zone week this play right here is just you know as long as you have a gap like right over the guard that's typically going to be the best play it's going to work best against spread defenses where the linebackers are typically uh out wide but ultimately you're just following this guard once he gets off this double team you typically will get to the linebacker though right there he didn't do that next up we got the halfback blunt dive it's just one of the better run formations in the in the uh just one of the better run plays in the formation you pretty much want to look for a lane like this where typically that defensive end is out wide enough that um, he takes himself out of the play. That's pretty much the best way to, uh, to put it. Typically, that left guard will pull and get to that second level right there. He didn't quite get enough, uh, but that's pretty much going to be your, your look. The only other look you want to run is like right here. You can see they're kind of spread. I would rather flip this, though. We have a lane here, and uh, you can see we have additional blocking, so we should have somebody get to that second level. And you can treat this like a stretch run right there. I messed it up by hitting my lineman, but you can see there was a huge lane opened up to the outside there. So it's an inside read first, then you can take it outside. You can really flip it to either side with the right stick i find that the best looks going to be a spread alignment or if they're shift towards you know if they're overly shifted towards the two tight ends next up we got the pa boot left tackle run this against random but ultimately uh this is pretty much a man beating play you're going to go from the rb route to the a route to the x route that's going to be your your looks right here it looks like we have an all-out man blitz um but that's pretty much going to be your reach this is going to be your money play against uh, man blitzes um, but ultimately the comeback route is going to be good as well. Looks like we have another man blitz. I picked random, I swear. But here, I mean, this uh, the RB route was getting across that really well. They got caught up at the last second. But like I said, you're reading that first. You're reading that RB route. Typically, he'll get open best under cover three and cover four zones, like right here. I'm not really sure what he has, but none of those guys really got separation. So taking the X route as your last read, um, the the uh, the B route really isn't part of the read structure at all. Let's do that one more time. I think I threw that ball a little bit late. Uh, and then you can see right here, you know, we can get in front of that. I mean, one of those three routes will be open just about every single time. Next up, we got the close PA cross. This is a good cover three one, or cover four one play touchdown as is. Uh, just block the running back and make sure that you roll in the direction of the throw. As soon as it gets inside the safeties of the bullet and passing it over the top, and you can see you can get behind pretty much any defense as long as you have enough speed. I'll go to the replay real quick just to show you guys what I'm looking for. Uh, because like I said, there is a glitch. It's been in the game for a very long time that when you roll in the direction of safeties, they typically don't draw back as quick now here the safety does draw back but basically i'm just waiting for this guy once he gets inside of this safety like that i can pretty much throw the ball so you can see i actually kind of threw that a little bit early but you can see the second he's beyond the 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 strong safety the only person that can really make a play on this is the strong safety so once he gets past that depth it's also a pretty safe time to throw because i'm bullet pass leading away from this safety so there's not really a play that he can make and i'm just basically throwing it to space 
Other than that, this play has a lot of good man and zone beaters. If you go against like a cover two zone, or cover two man, I'm sorry, you basically have a couple of good routes. The crossing routes are all good routes when it comes to cover two, uh, or any man really. So the RB route, the B route, all these routes are going to have success when it comes to um, pretty much any zone. I mean, man or zone. But against man, your tight ends are going to be good. Against zone, um, you're going to have a lot of success as well. So we'll go cover three locks just to show you guys uh, that you can basically just run this. So like a lot of plays that I'm showing, we're basically just kind of reading from front to back. And then you can see that, you know, one of these guys is going to get up against pretty much any man or zone defense. Next up, we have the halfback inside zone. It's another play from this formation where essentially, um, you know, it's the best inside run in the formation. There's no real reads needed, um, except, you know, you just want to make sure that you have a little bit of a gap to the left side. But this, this play here does a pretty good job of blowing open holes. These inside zone runs are definitely some of the most consistent in Madden 22, and it works really well with the stretch play. So, like here, I could easily switch over to the stretch play because there's not necessarily a gap, or I could just run this and try to take it outside. Uh, but without a doubt, this is if you have spacing if you have gaps which a lot of defenses have some defensive have more than others um, you can see how you can really have a lot of success uh, and you know just get to the next level like that there that uh, that guard typically will try to get to that second level he did a pretty good job there let's watch the replay early on it didn't look like this guard was going to peel off if I can get over here real quick um, all right, whatever, but yeah, so you can see he starts off with the double team. These inside zones you typically start off with a double team and then they get to the next level, which is why I ran directly at him before peeling outside because I wanted to make sure that he sealed that block so that I would have that space. Next up out of the single back wing pair, we have the halfback stretch. It's another play where if it's overloaded to one side, you can just simply flip it, go the other way, and have a lot of success because there's typically, um, you know, this formation forces the overload. It's not the defense itself. As you can see right here, when I motion this guy away from the line, and this is a trick that's been going on for a long time, the entire defense shifts. So it's really up to you. If you want to try to go that side, motioning him out can be helpful because then you'll get that tight end on that uh, receiver, or I'm sorry, on that cornerback block, which can be helpful. Or in my opinion, it's best to just basically flip it and run it to the other side based off the fact that this formation forces that overload look. You basically just have nothing to contest. Next up, we have the PA tight end seam. Pretty much just want to drag the B route. If you want to, you can drag the RB route and give yourself an extra blocker. It really doesn't matter. But ultimately, those two routes will get open against just about anything. You're really going front to back here. You're really going to look from the short route to the, the mid route and then to the deepest route, which is the comeback, which you can see right there. I had a, a lot of success with here. We've got a man zero blitz. The comeback is going to beat that. As I, I, I don't know what happened there. I guess I made a bad adjustment after I threw the ball. But you can see against man or zone, it's really much pretty much the same read. You're just pretty much reading the drag to the crosser to the comeback route. And one of those three should be open just about every single time here. Probably should have thrown a little bit earlier, but you can see it's just a front to back read, really easy. Next up, we have the PAX Burst Cross. It's another play that's good against random plays. I'm just going to put the B route here on a streak, the A route on a drag. And it's pretty much, you know, reading front to back. If the running back's open here in the flat, I'm going to take that. That's typical of a cover three or a cover four. But I'm really working my way from front to back. I'm really working from the running back to the drag to the A route. The B route is really just there to pull coverage. This is pretty much going to be all that I uh, that I do here. And you can see, like I said, somebody's always going to be open. Right there, that was probably the most safe route. It took me a little while to decipher because I thought that the deep route was going to be there. But ultimately, something will be here. Uh, when it comes to all these particular plays, you can see right here, that was probably a man coverage, but I think the my, my controller was on the linebacker. i got to be better about being on the defensive tackle with this remote just so I don't necessarily uh, run into those problems. Let's go through that one more time. I said that one there probably wasn't too indicative of what I was going to be looking at. I said right here, there's three levels crossing. One of them will be open every single time. The spacing is pretty impossible for any defense to take away. Next up, we have the PA Experts Cross. Another cover three one play touchdown on old gen consoles. You have to run this from a hash mark and you have to run it to the open side of the field. So I'm just going to motion in the X route here and put him on a streak. Then I'm going to put the B route on a streak. I'm going to block the running back and slide my protection to the left. That's all I really have to do. Then I'm just waiting for this X route to cross 35 yards so I can pass lead him away from the safety. As you can see right there, it gets passed, although that wasn't necessarily the best catching animation. We'll go ahead and we'll do that again. The um, you know as far as I'll put the or I'll put the um, 
the B round of streak, and I put the RB round of drag for a check down. As far as the blocking adjustments, that's that's not really mandatory for the play to work. I'm just doing that because I find that it works best to double team. Number one, their best pass rusher, but number two, I like to roll in the direction of the throw, and then you can see right there, we get a great pass lead as we get the touchdown that time. So you can see, it's a very easy one play touchdown as long as it's set up correctly. And you have to watch this guy here. Watch, number one, you gotta watch for that cornerback to stop running, which he will. Number two, you have to wait for him to pass 35 yards, which is right about here. So once he does that, I'm probably already throwing. I guess it's it's somewhere, maybe it's not 35 yards, maybe it's closer to 30. As you can see, the ball was out of my hand before the receiver reached that amount, but maybe it's 35 yards away from the quarterback. I'm not 100% sure, so the fact that I'm dropped back might be part of the reason why it worked. Next up, we have the tight end attack. This play here, just coming up with the B route on an in route. You can block the running back if you want to, although he has a pretty good check down. All you're gonna do is read the shortest routes to the deepest routes once again, the A route, the B route, all uh, you know, the crossing routes are pretty much the two reads. They just uh, separate at a little bit of a different timing than some of the plays from this formation. But ultimately, it gives you a really good um, level, a series levels of passing from short to deep. And you can see you can get some pretty big plays with this play on offense. Next up, out of the single back wing stack, we got the flanker spot. Let's go through. We'll play touchdown against current gen consoles. Just streak the A route and the X route. Uh, block the running back as well. He's not really doing too much. And you can see how you can get an easy one play touchdown right over the top of cover three you're not get the pass lead that i wanted i don't have a really fast receiver running that but you can see this is a very easy play i forgot to block the running back here we'll do this again although here i can see it's probably gonna be messed up i'd throw that a little bit early we'll do that one more time like i said i prefer a faster receiver there as well try to do that quickly so you have to run from hash mark to the open side of the field it's one of the more important things and then you can just see how you just get a huge spread here. I don't know why I'm not getting the pass lead, but it's still working out. I'm, I think I'm waiting for it to cross 30 yards. Let's go, let's go to the replay. That might be the problem. You typically have to wait for it to cross 31 yards before you make that throw. But you can see, I mean, this really spreads the defense out. And I think I'm throwing it too early. I think that's the problem. Probably three, yeah, the ball's well out of my hands. So you have to typically wait for that guy to cross 31 yards before you throw it to get a pass. But you can see, see it's still scoring. I won't play touchdown even without it. Well, I'll do that one more time. Like I said, just streaking the A route, streaking the X route. I don't know. I didn't get any of the streaks in, though, for whatever reason. So let's go and let's do that one more time. And I said, this guy here, wait till he crosses 31. And boom, we finally get a pass lead and we get a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we got the flanker spot. Motion out the B route and put the X route and A route on a streak. That's pretty much all you have to do. Block the running back. That's something that you can do. Not necessary, but he doesn't really do much for the play. And then the X route here is going to be a very easy one play touchdown right up the cover three seam. Just as long as you have a fast enough receiver. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. Another place to be best against cover three and cover four zones. I like to flip the play a lot, uh, but it really depends on, uh, you know, against zone coverage, it's like flipping it's best against man coverage. A lot of times it's best to just run it as is. Really depends on if there's a cornerback out here. Like right here, we got a cornerback. You can even motion across this tight end if you, as long as it's not, as long as it doesn't pull across a defender like man covers is sometimes have the uh, tendency to do. That'll just help seal that edge. It can give away where you're going, but ultimately it's still going to make the play more successful. Next up out of the wing stack, we got the halfback zone weak. It's a good inside run play. Um, you just want to typically look for spacing. Like here, we've got a huge gap right in the direction that we go. A lot of times that guard will pull off and get to the second level and typically take out the, the linebacker. So you got to follow the guard. You can flip the play and run behind the tight end side, but I don't find that's typically where you're going to find the best success. I just find it's typically best to run it as is. Just as long as, like, right here, you have, a, you have the spread look based off the fact that you have, um, you know, the two receivers basically pull this alignment apart enough that you can typically have success running it right into that gap. Next up, we got the jet sweep. It's another place to be best against cover three and cover four zones or man coverage. They all have success here. But just make sure you have your fastest receiver in this spot. And a lot of times he'll just come off the back edge here naked. And there's really nothing, um, you know, your opponent can do. If you have a speed advantage, you can typically just take it to the edge and uh, you'll have a lot of success. So the right here, if you don't have that blocking advantage like there, I didn't have anybody blocking that quarterback. So that's something you have to be aware of. So right here, cover two looks like definitely not the best look. I'm going to run it anyway because I'm kind of forcing it. But uh, you can see, you can take it inside short and just get what you can get. Or if it's cover three, cover four, take it outside and get as much as you can. Next up, we got the PA fork. Against cover four, you just have to put the B route on the street. This is cover four drop zones. Uh, and typically, you just got to hold the ball till this X route here gets ISO'd. Uh, on the safety, bullet and pass lead away, and you get a very easy one-play touchdown against cover four drop. 
Against cover three zone has the same success. Just streak that B route. Typically want to run it from a hash mark. Like I said, right here. Once he gets inside that safety, just bullet pass lead away. Another easy one play touchdown crossing the field. All you really have to do is put the RB route on a drag. Um, and I mean, you don't even have to really do that, but ultimately these are some, you have really good three levels of, of passing between the running back, the tight end, and the receiver over here. The You can leave the RB route doing what he's doing. Like I said, that's a check and release, but it's also a good man beating route. This is a very good man beating route as well. As you can see, he's going to get open underneath. That was a man cover one or a man zero. Next up, we got the smash. All you really have to do is put the B route or the X route on a streak, and the B route should get outside just about any man or zone, especially the cover two like we have here. That'll be a very big play. Next up, we got the halfback inside zone. It's just a good run play. I find inside zones are typically some of the better um, run plays. A lot of times, this this uh, guard will, will 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 break off to the next level, though he didn't on that play. But you can see how you can have a, a very consistent run game with a play like this. As we get uh, two back-to-back -back positive runs, that one obviously a very big run. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, a lot of times this left guard will break off. If he does, great. If he doesn't, obviously it's less successful. Next up, next up we got the PAFL stretch against cover two, Tampa two. All I really want to do is put the, the B route out here on a streak, and that will typically get the A route open uh, over the top top of it. So you can have a really successful play there. It also has some success against cover three as well. Well, let's choose cover three. It's just a good, you know, it's just a good play. Although this formation really revolves a lot around the run plays, you can see how once again you can have a lot of success outside, especially with an athletic tight end like Kaseki. It's got a good man beating route too. So for man cover zero, or um, you know, when people put the um, the 25 yard curl flats out, which would look something like you know cover two, uh, cover two man like like this, and then you know the Y routes typically are instead of deep halves, they're typically in you know curl flats. Uh, which is something a lot of people do. Um, the the X route can really have a lot of success. So I'm just going to give myself a little extra blocking. This is something where um, you know he's basically just going to get a little stutter step and go, and then just as long as I have a little bit of time to pass, you can see he's going to get open. So this is something that you're definitely going to need online. Let's go and let's do that one more time. Also works against man zero the same. I mean, I'll, I'll go down and run against man zero because ultimately we just saw that against man cover two. You saw that he was open. So we're going to do that one more time. I'm going to give myself a little extra blocking, a little stutter step route there. Once he basically um, you know gets past him there, I probably threw it a little bit too early. I mean, there's definitely some time into this as well. We'll go ahead and we'll do the cover two man variation one more time. So we've got our curl flats, which is, like I said, a lot of people have been doing that for years. Just to take away crossers. But it won't matter because this is not a crosser. As you can see right there, we just get a lot of separation. It's a very easy one play touchdown against cover zero, cover one, or co cover two with the curl flats. So now we're looking at cover one hole. I mean, I'll just, you know, same, same setup. If it's cover one, cover two, or cover three, I'm just going to streak the B route. Streaking the B route will get uh, the cover one safety over enough to give me that one-on-one -on -one I want. Um, so I can basically just bomb it up over the top of this cornerback here. Obviously, you probably need a little bit of a speed advantage, uh, which I probably have with uh, Will Fuller. Next up, we have the Sluggo seam. Against man cover one and man zero, put the B route in a drag. Uh, you can motion him out. You can you know try to get that safety over a little bit. I'll put the A route on a streak as well just to make sure he pulls back that cover one safety. Uh, and the X route should get open against just about any man cover just as long as you have um, you know, a pretty decent receiver right there. I didn't get the touchdown, but you can see it gets behind the cornerback. That's the bottom line. So man cover one, man zero should have that effect. Next up out of the single back wing type, we got the stretch alert looky. This play is going to be best against cover three and cover four to hand it off and try to take it wide. Uh, and if it's a man coverage, you typically just want to throw it to the X route. It's a really good play, especially if it's like a cover, if you're inside the red zone, and a lot of times people come out like man blitzes and stuff like that, you can have success to the slant, especially if they run commit. This is a really, really, really good play if you're pounding the rock and your opponent, uh, you know, doesn't have a lot of success stopping the run, they might start run committing, then you can throw it to the, the stretch alert looky. Next up, we have the PA slot cross. Against cover two zone, this play needs no adjustments, and it's an easy one play touchdown. I typically like to roll in the direction of the throw, though. As you can see, the safety is too busy reacting to the um, the underneath receivers, and then he basically gets beat over the top. Against cover three, we're going to switch to that. Works the same way. You just have to motion this uh, receiver in. I'm also going to drag the B route 
um, just to basically pull that cornerback down as much as possible and also give myself a check down. But you can see right here, once he gets past a certain point, he is he basically gets over the top of the cover three cornerback. I'll go to the replay. I like to uh, to roll out just because I want to shorten the throw. Plus, it also helps to pull the cornerback down when you when you roll in the direction of the of the cornerbacks that you're throwing to. But basically, there's a point where you want to throw right when he gets inside of this free safety. You just want to bullet pass lead away from the free safety. It's a very easy completion for typically was a catch and run one play touchdown. Also works against cover four. Cover four match. As you can see, we just have, um, you know, Diggs just basically streaking right across uh, the field again right there. So it's, it's in a one play touchdown against pretty much any zone. Against man cover two. I'm gonna do the exact same thing because that cover two safety will still be reacting to the lower routes uh, the same way it was in cover two zones. So pretty much any man or zone, this play will be a one play touchdown. Next up, we have the stretch alert, Lookie. This play's probably best against cover three zone when the cornerbacks drop back. Uh, cover three or cover four. <clears throat> the run is best against cover three, cover four zones. Uh, works pretty well against cover two. So any pretty much any zone now, it's weak to the stretch. Uh, and if it's a man coverage, you just basically want to throw it to the X route. Next up, we have the zone weak alert bubble. I find the bubble screen really works against any zone coverage. Uh, typically, cover two would cover out here a little bit better, but since the patch, it doesn't really work that way. So pretty much um, any zone coverage, you can throw it to the bubble. Uh, when it comes to man coverage or cover two, uh, I would say handing it off is probably best. Um, you can see, I mean, this play gives a really big running lane, uh, even though I didn't really get the blocking that I was expecting. I mean, I'm a lot of times expecting this uh, left guard to pull back, but he pretty much just leaves me one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with the linebacker, but I'm in a lot of space. Next up out of the strong way off, we have the halfback stretch. This here is just, you know, basic stretch play, but it's a really good blocking uh, version. I don't think there's a ton of great plays in this particular formation, but this is one of the better ones as far as getting outside. As you can see, the uh, they pull really well. The blocking really gets a good head start, which isn't always typical of stretch plays out of formations like this. You can see it almost like they start off really far. They just do a really good job of getting to that outside edge. You can see on this next play here, I'm just having a ton of success getting outside. Next up, we got the PA slide. You really just work in front to back between the RB route and the A route. If it's a man coverage, the A route will get open, but so will the X route, the comeback route. Um, but ultimately, this play here, if it's a cover three or a cover four, a lot of times you can get to the to the or the fullback underneath. But it's really just a two read play with the X being the man beating checkdown. If you put the X route on a smart route, he will have a lot of success against man cover one. Pretty much the B route will also. But this is an easy one-play touchdown if you smart route this receiver. Uh, as you can see, he just basically blows right past the cornerback. I would say this play will work against anything that doesn't have a safety over the top. So that includes man cover two, where the uh, you know the curl flat cover two setup, which a lot of people like to do, where these guys are like this, do the exact same thing. So you're going to see this route here will get outside of it and it'll just be gone once she's up the field. Uh, it's just a very easy, uh, you know, just lob it up. You don't have the bullet, you know what I'm saying? Just lob it up and, and run under it with your receiver. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Thank you.